your 2016 Heroes Among Us military category recipients, Thomas Brookman of Janesville and Sherry Kirkpatrick of Rhinebeck. Yeah, I was drafted in the U.S. Army in May 3rd of 1967. I was in Vietnam from the 27th of September of 67 through 22nd of September of 1968. I was a Tet offensive survivor. I was out on Hill 35 in Baldy and they called and said they needed me back uh, at Shulai. During that day I flew by helicopter from Baldy back to Shulai and then uh, that night we got hit with a Tet offense. We had just temporary tents that our office was in and we had no bunkers so I got to experience that by, we just plain laid on the ground as uh, rockets and mortars come over and bombard us that night. So um, there was few casualties. There was a lot of helicopters, the airstrip, planes, but there was a, then they hit the ammunition dump and it was like an atomic bomb went off. And it basically destroyed a lot of the structures of the tents and stuff just with a, concussion of the so that was the biggest experience that I had to deal with. I tried to put the, back, the war in the back of my mind and never really talked about it but when we got started with our project uh, research and finding the photos of the fallen um, to me talking with the families uh, friends of the fallen soldiers it was a healing process for me as well. The traveling wall was down in Washington, Iowa, so I asked um, my mom and dad if they wanted to go because dad had never really even talked about being in Vietnam and stuff like that. And I told dad, I'm like, you know, if something happens to you, really, you know, the history of the family with you being in Vietnam stops. So he, he thought about it and he decided, yeah, I'll go. So when we were down there, the guy who drives the semi um, is a, uh, he's a Vietnam vet. All right. And, um, from Iowa. From Iowa. And so he, he talked to us about um, out in D.C. that they're trying to find all these pictures and stuff like that. And he's like, you know, we'll you know, will you find the one, in, um, find the one in Janesville? And dad's like, yeah, you know, um, I, I retired from the Janesville school. I can find that one, no problem. And he's like, well, you know, isn't Janesville in Bramer County? And, and dad's like, well, it's actually divided between Bramer and Blackhawk. And he goes, well, can you work on Blackhawk too? And dad's <laughs> like, yeah, we can probably do that. And I'm like, well, I live in Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck's Grundy County, so I can work on Grundy County. And I said, well, my sister lives in Tama County, so we can probably work on Tama County. And my brother lives down by Des Moines. And I was like, oh, that's probably a big one. So yeah. I didn't volunteer that one up. <laughs> <laughs> we were driving home and we were talking about it and everything. And I said to dad, how can we just stop just because, you know, they don't live in our counties. And I'm like, maybe we should take on the whole state. And, dad looked at me and, <laughs> and he's like are you sure about this and I'm like I'm like yeah I said it's just not fair just because they don't live in our county that we shouldn't find our picture and he's like all right and so that's how the whole project got started and then that was just right there we just have to do this because you know they have a profile of the soldier but if you don't have a face to go with that you know, statistic or profile, it's, it's not complete. So that's when we really decided we, could, we just have to do this. I think it was we needed, what was it, 500 and, I think it ended up over 550 photos yeah. that we needed to find to complete the state of Iowa. It kind of took over our lives for a little <laughs> bit, but. There were a lot of mornings I'd get up with a cup of coffee and I'd be in my pajamas and I'd still be there at night and crawl in bed and get up the next day and start all over. So for us, if when we found a photo, it was just like a, we got a Christmas present. You know, we'd get excited. And so we'd check it off the list. Once she got it posted at DC that they had it. One of the coolest ones is when Sherry had emailed a daughter in 
with Sioux City, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, when she opened that email, and it was 43 years to that exact day that the Army come knocking at the door to tell her mom that her dad was killed. And uh, so Sherry says, oh, I'm so sorry that, you know, this is poor timing. And she says, no, it was really perfect timing because I know after all these years that my dad has not been forgotten. There was that other guy too that and I asked him, you know, do you have any pictures? And he's like, nope. As soon as I got out of the military, I put my stuff up in my parents' attic. I haven't gone through any of the stuff since then. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm sorry. Thank you for your service and stuff like that. Didn't hear from the guy for a while. Mm -hmm. And then pretty soon I got another email for the guy, from the guy. And he said that he did have a picture. And he said that once he got that email from me, he said it was time to start healing. And he finally had gone through his stuff. And he's like, thank you. You were my motivation. And he said, I'm starting my healing process. It's really cool um, because I didn't think that we would have an impact like that. And It was a re re rewarding project and healing, oh, you bet. Yeah. Thomas Brickman and Sherry Kirkpatrick, your 2016 Military Heroes Among Us.